The late former president Robert Mugabe was a sophisticated tribalist who pushed for his Zazuru clansmen to hold important positions in government and quasi-government institutions. According to a sensational claim made by Arthur Mutembra, the Deputy Prime Minister DPM in the 2009-2013 Government of National Unity Group, President Emerson Mnangagwa, on the other hand, was dubbed the crudest tribalist by Mutembra. At the concepts and solutions in pursuit of the elusive Zimbabwean dream book launch last Friday in Bulawayo. He made the comments. In Zimbabwe, according to Mutembra, there is a lot of tribalism. Clansmanship, ethno-nationalism and ethnicity are mentioned, however Mutembra objected. Saying that tribalism was an outdated phrase. Tribalism exists in Zimbabwe. Mugabe was a bit sophisticated tribalist. We need to fix this one ED because the current leader is a vulgar tribalist clansman. He stated. You can hear Mugabe exclaim, my Zazuru gang, in my book. He tells me a tale about how his goal was to travel to Ghana to see his son's grave after I came out of jail and I traveled to Mozambique with nationalist Edgar Tekra. As a result, Samora Marshall kept him out of the public eye for 19 months, he claimed. Mutembra further disclosed that Marshall later permitted Mugabe and his entourage to visit London. He claimed Mugabe told him that when he traveled to London, Zazuras approached him and questioned his participation in the Karen Gas and Manika's party. According to the former DPM, Mugabe also advised him to abandon Zenu and join Abel Muzarewa, where his clansmen were stationed, after receiving pressure from the Zazuras. He claimed Mugabe told him that after pleading with Zazuras to rejoin Zenu, the group as a whole did so. What I'm saying to you is that there is a significant ethnicity issue in this nation, Mutembra remarked. He also said that his book would explain why governmental problems like the gold mafia exist. You learn why these things happen in my book, I promise. You can learn the causes of tribalism in Zimbabwe from my book. You may learn why Zuned Moti paid the vice president, the president and the judge in my book. These farms will be explained in my book, Mutembra said. He claimed that he provided remedies in his book because merely criticizing and outlining issues was insufficient. For Zimbabwe, for Africa, and for the global south, we need a redemptive paradigm. Let's come up with solutions as well as criticism, he urged. Mugabe was hailed by Mutembra as a scholar who cherished education. Mutembra joked, I have an Oxford doctorate, and he preferred this fellow who went to school. I am passionate about history. Mugabe enjoyed narrating tales. I would ask him to sing while saying, Tell me about Joshua Komu, Tongogra, and Dobeningi Sitho. He has a lot of skill with antiques. He had a terrible memory for recent events, but he was amazing with old stuff. And he loved me, so we used to get along. Mutembra claimed that Mugabe admired him because of his moral character. If the answer is no, it is no, if the answer is yes, it is yes. When I leave the room, I won't change. Some of his pals would alter, Gordon Moyo in particular. If I decide against Mugabe, that's it for me, he remarked. Mutembra bemoaned how everyone in Zimbabwe is now a criminal due to the country's economic predicament. Arbitration poses the risk of turning everyone into a criminal, he claimed. Mutembra further remarked that the GNU failed to achieve reforms, with opposition political figures only succeeding in the constitution-making process. The government of national unity failed to implement political changes, and that is one clear failure that led to where we are today. In terms of the constitution and the economy, we had great success. ZANU-PF dumped us in 2013 because we were to a fault committed, and they said let these fools help us restart the economy. As ministers in the GNU, we were somewhat naive. He said. Write suspenseful clickbait headlines that keep readers interested.